All right, welcome back guys. We are going to go through the second part of flight training, which is going to be attitude and instruments. Let's jump into it. Today we're talking about attitudes of flight, how you're paid oriented relative to the horizon. If you look outside, you can see the cockpit is just about four inches below the horizon line. We're flying straight with a decent rate of speed. <clears throat> this is the cruise attitude. Let's see how it reads on your instruments. Take a look at the attitude indicator. As the name implies, it shows your current attitude. The white line is the horizon with the sky above and the ground below. That orange element in the middle, aligned with the horizon, that's your plane. Just like we saw outside, our current attitude reads pretty much straight and level. Okay, now let's see how much power the engine's generating. <clears throat> Check your tachometer. That's Looks like we're pushing right around side. 2300 revolutions per minute. Combined, attitude and engine RPMs translate to aircraft performance. Okay. Which leads us to your airspeed indicator. Now, last but not least, check your altimeter. To figure out your altitude, you always want to read the small needle first. That's how many thousands of feet up you are. Then on to the big needle for the hundreds. With our current attitude and power output, we're holding a speed of 90 knots and a stable altitude of 6,000 feet. But that's about to change. Take the stick when you're ready. All right. Let's Pull get Pull back it. slightly on the yoke to raise the nose just <clears throat> above the horizon line. About two inches. Make sure you don't pitch up too much, or the angle will be too steep to create lift. And without enough lift, we'll stall. All right, go full throttle and start climbing. Welcome to the climb attitude. Full throttle. See how it shows up on your attitude indicator and tachometer? According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed even at full throttle, yeah. proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Okay, before we go on, let's get back to a cruise attitude. Ease up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. Nice job. We're now set up with the same attitude and power we had at the top of our lesson. Next up is the descent attitude. Start by reducing your RPMs to 1800. Then drop the plane's nose a bit further below the horizon. I'm using the Logitech flight yoke system, so I'm doing this, physically doing this on a throttle quadrant right now. I'll leave a link in the description to the throttle plot, or to the yoke system along with the rudder pedals that I'm using in case anybody wants to check them out. So I need to drop. As expected, with a nose down attitude, our altitude is decreasing <clears throat> while our speed is picking up. Why don't you get us back to a cruise attitude and we'll hit the last part of our lesson. about 80 percent on the there we Logitech go throttle. now that we know how to cruise climb and descend let's talk about the turn attitude gently pull the yoke left or right to start rolling the plane the left. if you take a look outside you can see how our attitudes changed 
but you can also check your instruments for the details. <clears throat> As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. Okay. At the nice top of your attitude ticks. indicator, yeah. there's a series of notches representing 10 degrees each. Use them to control your roll. That is the end of part two. Definitely appreciate you guys hanging in there. Um, we'll have part three shortly. And like I said, I'll leave links in the description below where you can check out the Logitech Yoke um, throttle quadrant as well as the flight rudder pedals. Thanks and have a great one.